people of the internet, my name is Johnny and welcome back to another FNAF news video. But this time we're kind of focusing on just one topic with like two bonus news at the start of this video, which I'm going to talk about right now. But first, if you are not subscribed to the channel, boys, please subscribe. I cover so many, probably too much FNAF news. Now, now that I think about it, probably too much, but I cover basically everything there is when it comes to the series. So if you want to stay up to date, subscribing is the best way. And also, since you're here, smash like. It takes like two seconds. Anyways, uh, getting that out of the way, let's talk about some bonus quick news before we hop into FNAF AR, which is our main uh, topic we're going to talk about today. So, first news first, Help Wanted has officially released physically on PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch. If you pre-ordered them, they should be shipping out very, very soon, and you can actually go into stores and buy them right now. This is the first time FNAF has ever been released physically where you can actually hold the game in your hands, so this is very exciting. The core collection, which includes FNAF 1 all the way through Sister Location, will be released January 12th. Kind of a ways away, but since we're already talking about physical copies, I thought I'd mention it here. Also, Sister Location received an update today for the Nintendo Switch. They got a new pause menu with cursor speed options, additional door shortcuts with the D-pad, lol bit analog stick fix, bitty bab fix, and many other fixes and tweaks. They are still working on the PS4 release. This is very exciting news because Custom Night on Sister Location on consoles was basically kind of unbeatable, especially when it came to lol bit because you had to click on the keypad, which is very small on the screen. So I'm very, very excited that this is finally out and I'll probably return to the game just to see if we can beat Custom Night. So anyways, now let's finally move on to FNAF AR, which is the big discussion point for the last couple of days. If you don't know, right now Olympics is hosting a community quest where if we can collect enough event currencies, we can actually fill up a bar and we can unlock a secret character early. Last time I checked, we were only like three bars away from getting the character, so if you're not collecting your event currencies, do so right now, we are so, so, so close. So I'm gonna quickly read Alumix's post before the interview with Kieran Happen, where Darko interviewed her, asking a couple questions, there's a lot to go over there, so I'm gonna quickly read this, then we'll hop over to the interview. We hope you're having fun with all the Winter Wonderland festivities, and yes, Arctic Blower will be making her debut at 4pm today. Obviously, this was five days ago, she's not returning today. Now about that quest. Some of you have noticed the new community quest pop-up in-game and wondered what it was all about. Well, here you go. How does it work? You just have to collect as many Winter Wonderland event tokens as possible over the next week. And the amount that you collect will be reflected in the community token thermometer, which will be updating in the game. If the thermometer is filled up, a very special delivery will be sent out next week. Y'all are already on your way there. How do we get tokens? There's a few different ways you can do so. You'll get most of the tokens through daily challenges, followed by the event rewards, defeating animatronics and map balloons. I'm game. What's the very special delivery? Drum roll, please. The early release of a new animatronic character, which we do know who that is and we'll talk about very shortly. Well, I mean, he's in the title and the thumbnail, so you know who I'm talking about already. We'll still be releasing a new animatronic skin next week, that is this week now, as part of the Winter Wonderland event, but wanted to give you all the opportunity to come together and unlock this character as a community. Grateful for all as always, and hope you have fun with this quest. We'll be keeping you updated, so keep those eyes peeled. And like I said, we're like three balls away from completing the thermometer. If this was posted five days ago, we only got like one or two more days. Like, if we don't fill up the progress bar, we would still get the character, but it would not be next week. It would be the final week of December. So I'm just curious, if we complete it this week, do we get two characters tomorrow, like the skin and then the actual character? Is that how it would work? I don't know. Uh, I'm a little bit confused about how this has worked because clearly we're gonna get the character no matter what. Alimix has clearly taken the time to make the character, so it's, it's not like they're just not gonna release the character, so I guess getting it early is the prize here, but if we get it no matter what, wait, it's like we're only waiting an extra week. I don't know. <laughs> it's a little bit weird, 
But, you know, I still respect it. When they did a event, like when the game first came out, that was great. I love when they do stuff like this and I hope they keep doing it in the future. And so now let's move on to Darko's interview with Kieran. We got a lot of information. The, the, the stream was like an hour and a half. It was pretty long. But I actually have a Reddit post here made by the GG Code 2014. So I'm getting my information from a six year old. That's great. Yeah, they have a whole list here of basically all the news that we're going to talk about right now. So let's talk about that. So. Like I've said kind of already, the community character's hint for the next character being added into FNAF AR was it's me. Now, I'm not even going to try and sugarcoat it. We're just like, oh guys, it's funny. If Kieran said it, then she's being added to FNAF AR. What's her mechanic going to be? Clearly, it's Golden Freddy. Um, how he's going to work, I'll speculate a bit, a bit here. So, this is the way I think he might play out. I don't think he'll be like Plush Trap, and that's based off of reasons I'll get into shortly, um, from information from the interview, I feel like he probably, it would be weird if he stood up, because <laughs> in basically everything we've seen about Golden Freddy, he's always like slumped over. So I feel like what they're gonna do is they are probably going to use the FNAF 2 Golden Freddy. I feel like that is kind of the one that's being used a lot more than the FNAF 1 Golden Freddy. You know, like even Scott prefers FNAF 2, Withered Golden Freddy over FNAF 1, right? He was in Custom Night, so Ultimate Custom Night, I mean. So I definitely do think they'll use FNAF 2 Golden Freddy. And in FNAF 2, um, again, talking about the interview here, Illumix says they try and take influence from past appearances um, of the characters in like previous games. So a big thing about Golden Freddy in FNAF 2 was that he was kind of a ghost, you know, much like FNAF 1, he, he had a huge head that appeared in the hallway that would like fly at you if you didn't put the mask on in time. So I hope they do something like that. That would be amazing to see. Like for his charge attack, it's just his floating head flying at you. That's gonna be awesome. I hope that's what they do. Um, and then I hope he has a feature where it's like hallucinations. You know how the normal animatronics have like distractions where they can appear off to the side like doing a pose. And then if you hover over them, they like fade away. I feel like I would want them to focus more on that because that's a, mechanic that doesn't really get used a whole lot in the main game it i mean they are what they are they're distractions so i feel like that could be a good new mechanic for golden freddy because he is a hallucination so seeing him in different places at the same time would fake out a lot of a lot of people all right you see him over here but the static is over here or you see like him behind you but it turns out there's another one of him in front of you i hope they do something like that that's probably gonna make me upset in the future because I'll be just like, oh, I don't understand what he's doing, but I think it'll be cool. So yeah, that's what I hope they do with Golden Freddy. Moving on, more characters that take you to areas, kind of like Plush Trap, will be arriving. However, since Plush Trap took quite a long time to get into the game, I feel like they probably won't be as regular as just normal characters and skins, but then again, a lot of that time was just the making of the engine that made that whole thing possible, so who knows? Maybe it takes a lot less time than we think it does. There will not be any holiday specific winter skins, clarifying nothing Christmas related. So sadly, alas, no Santa spring trap. But it does make sense. You know, Illumix, I will say, they've been very, very good at bringing in different uh, cultures, different religions into the game. And I that's something I really, really love about this game. You know, you got, um, what's it called? Uh, Katrina Toy Chica. That was amazing. You know, I doubt there's that many, you know, Mexican FNAF fans, but the fact that they did that was amazing. And it's not me saying, oh, those Mexicans, they hate FNAF. That's me saying the large portion of the FNAF community is not Mexican. Hopefully I'm not offending anyone there. Anyways, moving on, um, a new gameplay type will arrive as early as next week, something with the coming soon curtain. Yeah, so if you don't know, in the game where the balloon image used to be, there's a red curtain with the Fazbear Entertainment logo on it saying coming soon. And that apparently is a brand new gameplay update involving the camera. Um, there's a few hopes that I have with the gameplay update, but I don't really want to say them because then I'll get upset when it's something really bad. I hope it's something good. <laughs> in early 2021, a huge gameplay update will come out. And when we say huge, we mean huge, right? I believe Kieran said that it was gonna like change the entire game, which I really, really hope it does because this game really needs some shaking up. It's been mostly the same 
ever since it came out over a year ago now. A lot of new skins are coming. Of course, I, there was no doubt in my mind that they were going to stop doing that. The reason why we have so many skins will connect to the 2021 update. Yeah, so I'm very curious because when Kieran revealed this, I was like, okay, that's a bit interesting. The reason why they've been releasing so many skins will be revealed in this big update. Um, and she said, if you're not collecting the skins, I highly recommend doing so. So, I guess I gotta get working on skins. Boys, send me your skins, please. Something big next week. Kinda ominous. I don't remember what this is referring to. So I guess we're just gonna have to wait and find out. That's so vague. Uh, anyways, moving on. Sometime in the near, in the new year, Illumix will be taking a break once the 2021 update releases. And this is something I'm, ha I'm very happy about. If you know me, um... I'm not a huge fan of the skins. Even when they say in this big update, we're gonna find out why we've released so many skins. I, even then, I'm still not the big, biggest fan of them just pumping out skins after skins. Even if it has a purpose that we just now learned about months and months later, I'm still not a huge fan of it. Especially when the skins cost more than the price of like one singular FNAF game. Um, so yeah, I'm happy that they're taking a break. They've worked their butts off this year. Olympics, you do deserve it. And at the same time, I'm just happy we're not gonna have to do skins after skins after skins because they can get pretty repetitive. The 2021 update more than likely won't release in January. Yeah, I believe they said, uh, actually, you know what? I'm not even gonna spit out a release date because I don't fully remember and I don't wanna say something because if it's wrong, people will hold that against me so yeah not january probably oh god what did she say i can't remember what she said go watch the interview it'll be linked down below more fnaf AR exclusive characters like frostbear will be coming in the future so you know how frostbear never appeared in a past game nor is he a you know a, a skin like a bit baby technically she's from the sister location cupcake minigame so she is not a exclusive character to uh fnaf AR, but frostbear is Hopefully, you understand where I'm coming from with that. That is what they're talking about. Characters that were not seen in the past, um, that are exclusive to FNAF AR, that are not skins. This is another hyped one. Security Breach characters will be coming to FNAF AR eventually after SB is released. I'm very glad that this is happening, not only because people will finally shut up about this, like, oh my god, it's like the second most annoying thing after them constantly asking for plush trap. And I realized I was one of those people. But like, at least we had evidence to back us up when we were like, give us plush trap, give us plush trap. Here, people were just saying, give us SB characters because I don't know, it was just annoying. So I'm kind of glad that they cleared this up. I'm hyped for it. Um, though they're not going to appear until after FNAF Security Breach. So keep that in mind. So many skin concept are created are currently backlogged, meaning we'll be getting a lot of skins in the future. I don't remember them talking about this, but it's something that, again, I'm not too surprised about. They're going to keep pumping out skins, um, m you know, so, so much longer. More lore will be coming in 2021. I was very interested about the lore questions, because normally you can't ask you can't ask questions about the lore. Even Kieran said in the interview that she knows lore that we don't know yet. So she kind of tends to stay away from questions about the lore. And I was even more interested about them talking about the FNAF AR lore because we had those emails leaked, the in-game emails leaked not too long ago. So I wonder, I was wondering, I was wondering if she was going to bring up those. Uh, she didn't, but she did say that more lore is coming, which is kind of surprising. I don't know if they're going to release the emails that already got leaked, if they're going to create new ones. I'm not sure, we're just gonna have to wait and find out. More FNAF AR merch is coming in the future, yup, totally saw that coming. Characters who have had voices in the past might have their voices, if possible, return to reprise their role. Meaning if the actor actress is available, they will try to get them to reprise their role. This was something that we already knew. Right, check oh, uh, Chica, her voice actress came back. Same thing with Circus Baby, Afton, all those boys. Interestingly enough, and it um, talks about this later on, Ballora, she is a example of a character who did not have her voice actress come back to reprise the role. 
um, and we'll talk about that a bit more later on. A way to fight your own animatronics might come in the future. The keyword here is might. This is something that I personally have wanted for a long time, so the possibility of it coming to the game is very exciting. Um, but again, it does say might. That's not confirmed. They have said that they were, they've they looked into that possibility, but they don't know 100% if it's happening. More new voices will be seen in the future. So what it means by this is you know how Toy Bonnie didn't have a voice before this game? That's what they're talking about here. So characters who have not had voices in the past, again, Toy Bonnie, will sometimes, <laughs> I say sometimes because Jack O'Bonnie didn't have a voice, um, but he was in the game and he still didn't have a voice. So sometimes, characters will get new voices. Skins for Plus Trap will come eventually, but it is more work to do them, so don't expect them soon. Yeah, because Plus Trap is basically like the god among all these other like puny <laughs> mechanic um, characters, you know, like he has a full 3D environment that you have to take into account. His CPU doesn't work with any other character besides his own skin. So, that's why it's gonna take a bit for plush trap skins, but I'm hyped for them. More shadow related characters might come in 2021, with some things having to do with Remnant. Again, this is just a possibility. She said not 100% confirmed. Yeah, this is something I remember um, them talking about. It's kind of worded a bit weird. Here, I don't know if they're talking about Shadow Freddy, I don't know if they're talking about like Agony and all that stuff, but more shadowy content is maybe coming in the future and that is exciting because that is a aspect of the game that's kind of out of date you know it hasn't really been touched upon basically ever since the whole AR thing where Shadow Bonnie could like appear behind certain um items which by the way I don't know what happened to that it feels like that aspect of the game just kind of is forgotten. Did they ever release that? I don't know. Anyways, last thing. It is currently unknown if Laura will get her voice in FNAF AR, so just keep in mind that there is a possibility that some actors, actresses, might not come back to reprise their role. Also, for new voices, Scott must approve of them as well as a Lumix, and some characters will not get voices due to Laura and etc. <laughs> and etc. <cetera. laughs> you gave one example and then you said and etc. <laughs> what? You can't like make a list out of. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, so this is again what I was talking about. Blower, Toy Bonnie, and Jack O'Bonnie are very interesting characters to talk about when it comes to voice actors because Toy Bonnie, he didn't have a voice and he got one. Jack O'Bonnie, he didn't have a voice and he didn't get one. Blower, she had a voice but she didn't get one. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure why Michelle Moss, the voice actress for Belor, did not come back for this game. Um, so we're just gonna have to wait and find out what happened. And it's so strange too, because like Belor, she like she's been in so many of the games. Sister Location, Ultimate Custom Night. She's been in two games. Two? I don't remember. And both those times Michelle came back to do voice lines. So not sure what happened there. So that was kind of a long video, um, but there's a lot of stuff to talk about. Very exciting stuff. Kieran said that they are going to keep working on this game for a very long time. So I'm very excited to see where the game goes. And from this information here, we know just kinda where it's gonna go in the future, at least for next year. So thanks so much for watching, boys, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye. Gregory, be still. I think she's found us. <laughs>